All right. Just setting up. All right. Everything looks fine. And I guess here we go. Um, welcome to the Friday uh, open studio design slash build session. Um, we're just going to continue right off of uh, where we left off last week, which was um, we drafted up some parts here. So we have the fuselage base from last week. Um, we defined that shape. We also have these parts here. Um, these are the two wings. Um, they need to be folded in half um, to, you know, make the part. Um, this is the main fuselage. Those are the two wings. And then this is the aft portion of this design, um, which is going to be the A-shaped tail. Um, and these tabs here are just uh, just for the double layered leading edge um, so it's kind of where we left off was uh, creating these pieces I do still have the templates um, they were made using regular printed paper um, so these were traced onto cardstock and then the actual parts were made so this week uh, the plan is to really just um, start fabricating the wings first. Um, that way we have two parts that can be fit onto the fuselage and then we can build on top to uh, really integrate and uh, um, make sure the wings are in place. Um, so yeah, let's just get started here, I guess. Uh, let's put this drawing in the corner. So we're gonna start with a wing. Gonna get closer a little bit. There we go. All right. So here we have a 2D layout of the wing. So first we need to fold it in half just to, uh, you know, make that part. So this is going to be a little tough, but uh, I'm going to use two rulers like that. And I'm going to try and mark out the midpoint there. Point here. Um, we're gonna try and get a nice straight fold. So this is gonna create the leading edge here, which is gonna fold over onto itself. This is one of the wings, um, and then the part that tapers differently here is the winglet. So. We'll model that later, but um, just uh, I'm trying to think like what kind of spar I want to include. Um, typically in legacy designs, I have included straws, so like I sandwich straws in between to uh, create the thickness. But I think for this design, actually, uh, the straw might be a little too thick. Um, the profile of the airfoil shape will be too thick if I use a just a conventional straw. So I'm thinking about just using, um, like, you know, in the case of the Astra prototype, the um, use popsicle sticks, which are a lot stiffer uh, yeah so they're a lot stiffer um, so and and they're thinner too 
which makes them great for uh, creating wing structures. Um, the only thing with popsicle sticks are that you have to be careful of uh, warping. It's not not all popsicle sticks are super super straight. Like this one, it has a little bit of curve. If you uh, line it up against a a line here, you'll see that you know it, there's a little bend in there. Well, it's not quite perfect, right? So there's a little bit that's been um, and this one is really obvious right here this this one is kind of wicked right it's kind of bent so you want to be careful not to use bent ones um, I got a box of about a thousand of these for about seven dollars so it's a very economical way to uh, get material to build um, so right now I need another one that is pretty straight. All right, so this this seems pretty okay. Um, just lie them flat. If they have some play, that means it's not perfectly straight. But these two seem to have about similar amounts of play, so. Should be all right. All right, so now we're going to build the wings. Um, to do that, we also need some tape. I'm checking my uh, tape supply. I think this is my last round of tape, actually. So I have to go for another supply run soon, but gotta be just blowing off the dust. The tape dispenser. Anyway. Just keep this off to the side here. Alright, so... I'm gonna have to place the spar inside the wing. Right, so the fuselage is gonna be here. The wing is gonna come out here. Just gonna figure out where to place the spar so that it can create a nice structure. I think maybe this is where I switch units. the other one first. Right. Just move this off to the side. I'll use this ruler to hold it down. size hole. Um, I think what I'm going to do is actually just uh, let's kind of like tape it together. Yeah. So I'm going to tape the two wings together. Move 
this will create the uh, create a unified wing structure. to be perfect. It is a rapid prototype after all. Um, this is just temporary. It's not supposed to be a structural thing. Um, as you can see, it's very flimsy. Uh, it's just to hold it together so that I can you know, work with it a little bit. Um, as you can see, I can put it here. center it All right um, and then use a tab of tape to very really secure this down so that it's mounted onto the fuselage so it's constrained in place I'm gonna move this camera up a little bit um, and so Remember, our goal is to really finish the wing and then start building the fuselage on top of that. But we also need to make sure the wing is structurally sound. So just trying to figure out how to do that right now. Um, yeah, so this is, this is interesting because you can mount it right on the leading edge there. But then you're going to like have some... Uh, tolerance issues so when you fold this over um, this edge right here will not touch this edge if you put the spar up you know up here right you need to give it some space um, so that it can naturally curve over it and even then it, it's not gonna match 100% to the trailing edge which is a bummer um, but that's just because, you know, it comes out at you a certain thickness. So you're going to have a curvature, which is going to take away from the pure 2D match, right? So it's not going to fit perfectly, but it'll do. Uh, you just don't want to, like, really exaggerate that effect by putting the spar um, right at the leading edge. So... I'm thinking maybe like a halfway to to the tip. No, that, that's kind of weird. I usually like to keep the spar parallel to the leading edge, but how much back is going to be an interesting uh, kind of uh, design because you don't want the trailing edge t to be too close to the tip of this thing. And you don't want this to be too close to the leading edge. Um, and right now, I don't have the proper tools to actually change the shape of the spar. I mean, I could sand it down. I have sandpaper, but that's probably not a good idea. That's too uh, too long of a manufacturing process for a rapid prototype. Um, so this looks about right. So I'm going to mark what I see right here. This looks about parallel. Again, with a lot of these things, it's, uh, it's, you know, you have to start somewhere, so you have to eyeball to get started. And how well you eyeball things is really a function of how much experience you have, right? So if you design a lot, if you think about these things a lot, um, even in you know, just in daily life, the products that you use every day, you know, they have ratios, right? Um, I, I could go into an example, but I feel like I'd go on a big tangent there. Um, yeah, you see, like, this This is kind of like a sizing problem. Um, so you want to make sure the margin here is about the same as the margin there. Um, then you want to make sure that it's parallel to the leading edge. Um, that's just how I like to do it because um, this creates a consistent kind of 
thickness, um, if you vary the angle, you're gonna get like a thinner um, wing section here versus at the tip because this is closer to the front. So it'll make the front more blunt, so to speak. Um, so if you make it parallel, that'll make sure that the curvature coming over the spar is gonna be constant. It's, um, you know, it's gonna be constant. And then the back here can vary, which I think looks better. Um, again, you know, you could do this with like just eyeballing, right? So um, I think in actual airplanes, they also tend to keep the spar uh, somewhat parallel. Well, I mean, it's a different situation in real life with aircraft um, because it's, uh, you have, have these spars that are parallel at the front, um, but then they change, right, as you go aft. So they have multiple spars and then you know, they have ribs that go longitudinally right, parallel to the aircraft axis that go along the wing like that. And so, you know, that gets really complicated, but to simplify everything for this design, for most of my designs, I use a single, I was gonna say singular and kind of mess that up, single um, spar, yeah. I just keep keep things simple and uh, relatively lightweight uh, so right now I think this is about good um, I'm gonna measure this and we'll see how much it turns out to be All right so this seems like it's about 0. 0.6 ish Let's see what imperial units it measures up to be Sometimes it lines up. Wow, that is perfectly on the dot, a quarter of an inch. So, like, you know, when you measure things like this, um, you, you constrain the actual design, you click numbers to the nearest, right, to the nearest uh, fourth or eighth or whatever, and then you eyeball things proportionally. Um, if you eyeball well, it's going to end up being exactly a quarter of an inch in this case, right? So that's just a design tip. Keep everything in proportion. Um, and yeah, just have a good sense of proportion. And that's something that, you know, I can't teach you through a live stream. You just kind of have to do that through experience. Um, so we have a placement here. Uh, well, these two should be identical. They have to be. They're machine made. Well, one is a little bit longer than the other, but I don't think that should matter too much. Um, at least not, you know, yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. So, if I constrain this here, and then, well, first let's actually just trace out a line on the leading edge to make it more visible. Right now I'm using the fact that this is folded a little bit to identify the leading edge line. Um, but let's actually mark that out so that I have an easier time seeing it. So you have the tip here going to root. Wait, so that's that. Now you can more clearly see that uh, distinction between, you know, or the l distance between the two lines. Um, and yeah, so what I have right here is the, are the two wing pieces that we made last week, taped together and then taped to the fuselage to, to just kind of tack it in place and have an overall view. Uh, we're going to build the wings kind of uh, concurrently at the same time to make sure that they're the same. Um, yeah, so let's draw the line on this side now. It's really warm today. It's 
almost 80, 82 degrees, 86, or not 86, 81. I don't know where the 6 came from. Anyway. Alright, so that's that. And then, well, try and get a quarter of an inch back from the leading edge. And this, you know, this isn't like a quarter of an inch um, this way. It's a quarter of an inch this way, right? Um, that's a big distinction because you know, there's, there's some geometric differences, um, if you, if you use the wrong one, um, it's gonna be off, so, right, so we measured the perpendicular distance, well, actually, okay, so it's, it's not exactly, okay, so it's a little bit behind, but it's close enough, we'll say that's, like, a third between this mark and this mark, I'm just eyeballing it. So, quarter of an inch, but then go back a third of a uh, 32nd, I think. So this is an eighth, or this is a quarter, this is an eighth, this is a sixteenth. Okay, third of a sixteenth, All right? There we go. Uh, yeah. For the most part, this should be okay. Um, you know, like using this line here to make sure that it's perpendicular to this leading edge line. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this for larger distances because a small error here at large distances means a huge error down, down the line, right? But since we're dealing with such a short measurement, it should be okay. Um, the way I would do it for longer ones would, would be to use an actual square right that way you know that it's perpendicular and you go out a certain distance but right now so that's you know what we're doing at this scale it's okay it's acceptable to uh to do this and so actually you know this tiny offset makes sense because we placed the spar actually at a quarter right and so what's happening is when I traced out this shape, the lead from this pencil is offset a certain amount outside of that spar, right? So if I do that, you can see that it's uh, offset a certain amount. So that actually makes a lot of sense that it's uh, a little bit in. So I would say my eyeball assessment is still pretty on the dot. I would just have to, you know, once I marked this, I would have to place the spar not on top of that mark, but a little aft of it. Um, and that's to match its position with the other one on the other side. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be kind of tricky. And this is a rough eyeball estimate. probably can't see that right now but let's move this a little bit closer here all right so for the most part I think this should be pretty parallel so we could check that it's parallel by so we measured you know a distance here if if we measure the same distance here all right so apparently this live stream is still going I uh, don't know what you guys saw while it was overheated, but here we go. I took the case off, so hopefully that helps. But uh, yeah, let's hope it doesn't happen. If that does happen, well then, you know, the stream is going to be interrupted. And uh, yeah, well, that's that. I'm just reading the comments. Cav says hi. Well, hello there. That was a couple minutes ago. Um, all right, so I'm gonna mount my phone in this device here. I'm gonna have a little gap 
so that it's cooled by air. Oh God, I didn't think thermals would be an issue, but today is an exceptionally warm day. It's almost 80 something degrees outside. As you can see, it's 78 degrees outside. So it is quite warm and I have not turned on the air conditioning because I do not want to uh, risk, you know, kind of circulating the virus that's out there right now into my apartment. So I'm just kind of heating up here. Anyway, uh, let's see, 75% battery. So if I, if I charge, I think it'll... It might overheat so if it does that again I will uh, I will let it cool down but um, yeah let me know what happened when it uh, when it kind of overheated was it still going like could you still see the live stream I I'm not sure but leave your comment in the chat I guess um, but yeah, if it does overheat again, I probably will just uh, end this session a little early because of uh, technical issues. Anyway, so now that I took the case off of my phone, it should be able to handle this now. Um, let's see. Well, it's temperature slated to head down from 78 to about 76-ish at 7 um so that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting i won't know if it'll overheat again but hopefully with the modified setup it'll be okay sorry for that detour some technical issues uh, let's get back into it so make this go down a little bit so we have a better view all right so we're going to Right, we're going to mount one of these spars. Right, and so the way I mount these is usually just, you know, using tape. Grab one of these sections, um, and then you just tape, try and align it nicely. and kind of like wrap around the shape. Don't want to go directly down. I'll try and get the side edges too. And what that does is um, it makes sure that it's secure in place. Right. And so what you can do is kind of just really push that in so that the tape bonds with the paper really well. The adhesive on the tape, right? So tape is like a weak kind of plastic film with an adhesive on it. So if you kind of mash it into the paper, it, it'll uh, stick better. I mean, that's kind of like, kind of intuitive, I feel like, but just need to put that out there. Um, you kind of make sure it's parallel and everything, make sure it's in line, and then you tape the other end of the spar, right? Right here. Make sure the position doesn't shift too much. And then you uh, fold the tape down, collapse it, kind of fold it in place, or yeah, you know, rub it in place. And then take the aft trailing edge here. And then do that. Make sure you don't uh, accidentally cut the tape with your nail. So I've, I have done that in the past when you overdo the pressure. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that because then you basically wasted a piece of tape and then you have to do it again. You could tape over it, but that'll increase the amount of tape that you put 
in your plane. All right, so you really want to minimize usage, I guess. I think I would put another piece in the middle here. And this isn't for structural reasons. You only need two points to, t to really fix a kind of a bar. Um, this middle one would prevent, you know, so if you fold this in half and you have a kind of a thickness here, um, if you only, well, I guess that really depends on the trailing edge, right? So, but I'm just trying to do some good work here because if you fold this, right, it's not constrained to the bottom. So what can happen is this part will uh, come down and bow out. So you really have to uh, kind of just mount it in place. In the middle and that's just for good measure so yeah there we go it's about in the middle It's kind of warm. Anyway, um, so we have one side done. Now I just want to mount the other uh, edge right, right here. I'm just trying, trying out the. Uh, trailing edge fit here. This fit is, as you can see, uh, the thickness in the spar is taking away from the material, and so when you fold it to the leading edge, or to the trailing edge, as close as possible, there is a little gap here. Right? This isn't ideal, but it is what it is, right? So, and at this point, you know, it's not really symmetric yet. It's not really a... Uh, so what I mean is, well, it's it's not asymmetric yet, is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, we could actually flip this over and define this as the top, right? But, yeah, what to do about this edge right here? Well, I think we might just have to trim that off at some point. But we're just going to uh, mount this bar right now and continue with the build. So fold that down, grab a tiny tab of tape. Um, and I can strain it on that midline right there with the round end and then try and align it with the outline that we put. And you just tape that down, and then you fold that in, fold that in, and then really just kind of secure it in place. Um, And then you want to do the outer edge, outer tip here. Yep. So there you go. Yep. There you go. So we got the outboard. This is, well, we don't really know for sure yet, but I have a good feeling this is gonna be the starboard uh, wing. I 
it's gonna be the port side wing. What we need to do now is secure the middle here. all set so now we can fold the wings over right this is the exciting bit we get to close up this wing structure but actually before I do that um, because I want to model the wings in such a way that the winglets are a curve continuous curve down and I mentioned in an earlier stream that I want to really define that shape and so I think what I'm gonna do is grab some paper clips and yeah, I'll grab two of these all right should be all set there and really just Try to figure out a way to mount these first. Um, just kind of shape it so that it matches this and then folds down here with the winglet. Um, and to do that, I feel like I'm going to need this ruler. So, what we're going to do is uncurl this paper clip right now. And so what I'm doing is holding one of these edges in place and then I'm just kind of uncurling this paper clip, right, stretching it out. Um, this is where it's helpful to have a nice plier tool. right now um, so I feel like I'm gonna have to stretch this end of the paper clip out and what I'm gonna do is kind of fold it in half such that we have two sides kind of wrapped around this spar right and then that's going to be secured in place with tape. We're going to secure the rest of this tab with tape. And then we have enough material to really start to shape this outer uh, winglet portion, right? So I'm going to curl this more. Making sure that this thing is straight. Um, yep. And then I'm going to uncurl this last bit. Right here. Sorry about that. I'm going to kind of use our wires here. Bend that back 
a little bit. This is gonna be a little tough because it's the last bit of paper clip left. Um, the shorter it is, the stiffer it is. Like the, the more mass you have, the less stiff your system is. It's absolutely stubborn. That's why it's so hard to work with um, paper clips. This is why mechanisms take a lot of time to really design and then make and then tune because we don't have the right tools for this. Anyway, so we have our metal wire. this so that we get a straighter filament here. Ah, it's not perfect, but again, this is experimental. I've never done this before. This is actually my first time doing something like this. So we're going to fold this in half and mount each kind of leg of this, I guess, each segment of this on here and then mold this in a way so that you know you have a malleable structure within the winglet and then we can create these kind of really nice curved winglets here this is kind of overkill you definitely don't have to do this like this is beyond a normal paper airplane but we are way past that anyways so um yeah rc helis and planes hello Uh, I'm just reading out the comments a little bit, but anyway, um, let's do this fold. So let's see what what measurement we're at here. We're at about ten. So if we take half, so that's gonna be five on this side, five on that side. But we want a thickness. So maybe like this much. This much is a good point to really clamp down here and then fold fold the uh, filament here and here and it oh wow that's that's pretty close it matches really nicely with this shape um, I think I just saw a comment earlier. Uh, suggestion, you should try experimenting with rubber band propellers. Um, that is a good point. I know of them. Uh, I know there are designs out there that are powered by rubber bands, but generally speaking, those uh, designs are super lightweight. Um, so they're, they're made like, I've actually made one at a camp. It's uh, basically really thin, lightweight wood, creating like a frame. Um, and then you're using literally just saran wrap, clear you know, film, and then just wrapping it. Um, and then having a rubber band that's, you know, twisted up 
and then you have a propeller that spins and, and then it flies. Um, so it's more designed, you know, that propulsion system is, is better suited for kind of lighter, uh, I guess, glider designs, um, which are totally different from, from what I'm trying to make here. So I guess to power something like this, you would need, um, it wouldn't be able to have sustained, you know, power in flight, um, unless you have like some battery with a motor or something attached to it. But, you know, that's a little beyond where I'm currently at. Um, you know, that, get, that gets into radio control and everything. And for now, um, that, you know, I do want to eventually get into that, but I want to do that when the time is right. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's going to be kind of tough to integrate like a propulsion system into an aircraft at this scale. Um, it has to be super lightweight because the, the the propulsion systems at this, you know, kind of scale are rubber bands, right? So you either need a super light airframe with balsa wood and, and film, or you need like a styrofoam professionally molded design with uh, kind of a battery and, you know, all the ESCs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so not quite at that level. I feel like if I do get into RC, I would not want to be at this scale um, because I feel like you could do a lot more if you scale up. Um, if you go on my channel and look for the project that I did a couple of years back, um, it's called the HYX1 um, Icarus. That is my kind of first RC plane design. Um, I never did a proper video for that. I don't think I'll be doing one at this point, but it was a very interesting project because it, you know, allowed me to test out new, uh, build techniques, right? So you're using like insulation foam to kind of shape the fuselage. And, uh, what's really nice is you can use disc sanders. And that was my favorite part is using disc sanders, um, to really shape, um, some of the parts on the RC plane, um, like, uh, I think it was like a twin boom, uh, vertical tail, you know, horizontal tail connecting the two vertical pieces in the back. And so I had a, you know, foam kind of a pod shape that kind of wrapped around here. Let me just sketch it out real quick. Actually, it was like, it's like a twin boom and then so you have a you have a boom right here you have your vertical surface right here i made a foam piece that was kind of like a little pod that connected the uh carbon fiber spar with the um, vertical stabilizer and so i really enjoy you know experimenting with manufacturing processes and making things at that scale rather than this scale so again back to my point if i want to do RC, I feel like I would scale up rather than, you know, continue going at this scale. So for this scale, I feel like the end game here for propulsion, at least, is um, a catapult design. Um, and even to do that, you know, it, it's going to take a lot of uh, machine tools to really make a solid catapult. I don't, I don't want to just like build like a, you know, like a little hook on, on the aircraft and then you, you know, rubber band launch it. I, I know there's people out there constantly suggesting to me to do that, but I really want to go kind of all out and have like a three to four foot, um, three to four feet, uh, kind of catapult, you know, just like a bungee cord. And then, you know, you have a trigger. It's going to be kind of like a gun of sorts, but it's really going to be you know, a, a final, um, thing in mo, I, I don't know. I'm just like rambling at this point, but that's just kind of an idea that I have. I do want to go in that direction, but I need machine tools for that. I, you know, I can't just do that in an apartment setting. So, so maybe a couple of years down the line, I will build a catapult and 
the catapult is an interesting thing because once that's made and you know I can miniaturize the design then things can get really interesting you can mount it on um, a drone you can mount it on an RC plane even that was kind of my original plan um, if you go back to the YX8 uh, that I did such a long time ago probably six years at this point um, the goal in that project was to create like a like a kind of catapult thing for one of these planes for these gliders um, and that didn't uh, really pan out because I wasn't able to create an RC plane before I went off to college so um, and then now you know stuck in an apartment after college starting at, at my new job and everything so I don't really have the resources to do a full-on project anymore um, unless I go back home to my parents house <laughs> and then just like take over their basement or something <laughs> which I'm not keen on doing um, but yeah that's uh if you go back to the YX08 that's you know kind of the idea there was to create a catapult but that one was actually interesting the power for the catapult wasn't in like an actual gun like railgun type scenario like you know like a crossbow or anything it was uh mounted on this nacelle pod it's actually a very interesting concept but you know looking back at it it's actually a terrible terrible idea <laughs> but going through it it was fun designing it and seeing it actually work right so you had these underwing pods that had a rubber band that could stretch and then when it retracted and pulled the plane forward it would go back into this pod and it'd be like an aerodynamic thing while the plane flew but you know the drawback is if you do that then you have this extra weight that you're carrying on your aircraft so it really doesn't make sense so it's a terrible design concept but i went there i made it um it's a thing i didn't even mount it on the final yx08 prototype that's kind of how <laughs> poorly executed it was um because you need two of those and i only made one of those um but anyways that's going way back um if you look at some of my older projects um yeah that's kind of uh where i left off but yeah that's that's for the future um is uh kind of a you know powered flight rc all that stuff in the future so i'm gonna fold this forward a little bit just so that um we have enough margin in the back here to fold this closer so that we don't touch the edge too soon um actually we might want to fold this out even more Right, so this, this is kind of like right here and yeah this is gonna be hard keeping this symmetric what I think I want to do for this part right here is once I make one of these I am going to really just take this other paper clip here unwrap it or unravel it and then match you know, curve for curve at each location um, of what I make for this. Um, so that's going to be kind of tough, but it's going to be painstaking. I feel like most of today's build is going to be perfecting the wings, really just building the wings down. Um, might have to do another session either tomorrow, this weekend, or next Friday, uh, building out the booms, and then you know, attaching the tail and then really molding over the fuselage. And then, you know, this design is fairly simple in that sense, but, you know, to do a good job, it's going to take some time to really uh, hunker down and, and get a nice quality glider and product, right? So right now I'm just using my hands to do a large fold here. 
Like, what if we flip this over? Right. Yeah. So the proof, what I mean by proof is the first part that you make is going to be perfect for that side but it might not necessarily translate to the other side um, and that's just from personal experience um, so you really have to tailor tailor it to the other side if you're not using like computerized uh, manufacturing and design tools because um, if you 3d print stuff things can be exact right things can be really consistent but it's not the case here we're doing things by hand old school so uh this is gonna be interesting so i'm gonna try and fold this out a little bit so eliminate that bend and then really just uh do that and see how it fits we don't want this to be too close to the back edge here so honestly it's like kind of tough to do this all right so so we need that additional kink right and that looks kind of right I'm not sure we don't want it to be at the tip but we want want it to have enough support material for this a uh, winglet this arcing arching winglet design um, this is a relatively simple shape actually um, if you look at I'm gonna take out the prototype again just so you guys can see um, in a lot of my other mechanisms the paper clip bending is extremely complex right if you look at that you know it has to match exactly to the point or else the mechanism is not going to function um, and so you know you have your pivots and fulcrums and hinges and everything they have to be made pretty precisely and that's why it takes a lot of time to make these uh, prototypes uh, so this is the YX uh, 10 M1. I think I'm going to call it M1. I'm like 80% sure I'm going to call it M1 at this point. But this is a work in progress. Um, you can see it retains the same mechanism design in the canard actuation, uh, control surface actuation mechanism, CSAM, um, for the canards. Um, so this is you know, the same. And... Also, in this prototype, there is another mechanism that actuates the uh, leading edge slats with this design. So the slats actually move up and down, so they're capable of moving. And the way this mechanism works is you have a, well, let me just move this camera up a little bit. You have a rod on the bottom here of the aircraft, so dual layered, right? You have a rod on the bottom that pushes this pin right here as you can see there's a slot for this pin to move back and forth in um, and then this pin just pushes this lever back and forth so it can push the lever forward but what's going to take the lever back and that's where this rubber band comes in this adds pretension to the whole system so that this lever wants to be down so the slats out here, which are connected via a rod, want to actuate down, right? And what we're doing is if we go against that and push forward, it's going to push that lever forward, which is going to push the slats up, right? And so if we demonstrate that here, if we push forward, the slats kind of retract into flight mode right so this isn't perfect right this is a prototype so ideally this would be perfectly straight but maybe in a future version with better uh, manufacturing or something 
we'll be able to fix that. But for now, this I think is a nice proof of concept. Um, so if you pull this back, you pull the rod pin back, um, it's going to deploy the slats, right? So that's pretty interesting design that I came up with. Um, I might in the future go with a dual pin design just for redundancy. So like have another one of these pins in the front. Um, that way it'll move this, you know, by itself rather than rely on rubber bands. Because these rubber bands, you know, they're nice, they're elastic, but, you know, with time and with uh, different temperatures and whatnot, you don't know if this is going to last, right? But the rods, those will definitely last. So for redundancy, say for effectiveness, um, I might implement a dual pin design. Um, the problem with that is it might introduce a, a little play in the mechanism. And so because this rod isn't always the same thickness, right? When it's very uh, horizontal, it's gonna be quite wide. So that's why I went with this solution for now, um, but I might explore a different layout in the future. Sorry for that tangent. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the latest mechanism. It should just shows you how intricate the metal work can get you know, for the paper clips. Um, yeah, so this is the M1 variant. It's still a prototype. And the whole reason we're actually doing this project right here um, with the twin boom and the, you know, thing is to figure out ways to mount things, right, uh, on the wing. Um, and I think for, you know, once we figure out how to do it on this and have some practice, then we can actually continue with this project because I want to mount the vertical stabilizers after the main wing so that it's more stable when it's at high angles. You have some fresh air hitting your vertical stabilizers. Um, on the previous prototype, I put it directly on the wing, which made it unstable in terms of yaw. Um, it needs to be aft a little more a lot more actually <laughs> to make it uh effective and stable so um to do that we need a new way of mounting which is why we're doing this project right here anyway sorry for that tangent i'll just put this to the side um take the box side here all right so uh back to this um really trying to create a shape that matches what we want to uh so if we match the plan form i think it'll match the uh design really well so you know if we match that you know trailing edge here and then kind of figure out a way to see this is like this is kind of tough um, ideally, it would be like an offset of this outer shape here. But we're trying to simplify things, so that's why we are just doing this instead. All right. So, you know what? I think this should be good enough for this, pro you know, rapid prototype. If I wanted to go all out like the Astra, I could do it like this and then make it angle perfectly parallel to this and then perfectly parallel to this and then you know coming back here but i feel like that's kind of overkill so with this shape we can approximate all of that geometry using this continuous curve that we just have to make again using another paper clip for the other winglet so that's what we're going to do right now i am going to use this ruler to unfurl this paper clip so what I do is I use my fingernail, grab this, you know, grab this, uh, or fingertip to, to really just hold that down and then use the straight edge to pull the uh, paper clip flat. And so you'll notice that it is still bent a little bit. So I like to bring it over the tip of the ruler 
and kind of just fold that down a little bit, fold that down, kind of just shape it so that it becomes a little bit, a little more flat, um, a little more straight. And so what we're gonna do now is hold this in place and then unfurl this, same idea, literally doing the same thing. Then take the curled bits here and overhang it over the ruler, over the edge of the ruler, and then fold down. So this is kind of like uh, an art in a way. You don't want to do it too much because that creates a kink. Um, and you want to do it just enough so that it becomes kind of straight. Um, and so there, there we go. Just one last edge. Uh, this edge is really difficult because it's really short. And so you just kind of have to, the material is being stubborn, but you have to be more stubborn than the material. So that's kind of how I think about it. Um, let me just put that down here. I'm gonna fold that over. This design is Rapid prototype zero zero four, I believe, because one was the very first one, two was the failed one, three was the X forty seven looking thing. This is gonna be number four in the series. Um, so yeah, I hold these design open studio sessions every Friday. I haven't yet done an additional session, but I'm planning on doing it depending on whether or not I have the energy and time and interest to do this. Um, but I'm definitely doing Fridays because I want to force myself into doing more for this hobby. Um, and the idea is to have this on in the background while you listen in. Um, while you're doing your own projects, you know, if you have questions about your own projects, um, you can uh, shoot a question in the chat and I'll hopefully get back to you, things like that. Um, so it's really kind of a studio atmosphere that I'm trying to aim for here with this uh, live stream. So we're trying to match this shape exactly. So now what we're gonna do is I just kind of constrain this in place right at the place where it meets. This is gonna be kind of iffy. Yeah, that's about right. And then I don't really need that other part. You just fold and uh, create shape that's uh, kind of similar but, but a little bit different so this is the original we need to curve this a little more to really kind of match the shape with the other one so this is the original right if we line the edge here tip to tip and okay well it's not perfect but generally speaking it matches fairly well so I'm inclined to just use this as is after all this is a rapid prototype like I said before a couple of minutes ago I could lay it out as an offset of the leading edge lay it out as an offset of the wing tip here and you know just really really go deep into that, but I don't want to do that for this rapid prototype, so a general shape will suffice. Um, this is just a structural thing for the winglet, which shouldn't even experience too much load um, if it, you know, flies properly and doesn't crash on the wingtip. Um, but we will see how this goes. Um, how much, right, how much to extend this is a good question because that depends on how well we can secure the inner side of this 
uh, right, so we want to secure it so that it's you know really in place here. Um, and I don't know if this will work. This is completely experimental. So uh, you could use epoxy, but I don't have epoxy because I don't. I just don't. <laughs> um, you could use tape. Let's try using tape. That is one thing I do have right now. Um, so what you're gonna do is uh, try. Well, so these two shapes are pretty similar. One might be slightly longer than the other, but let's try lining the front edge. Well, it doesn't even matter because it's not the same. But try lining the front uh, piece right here with our existing tape, right, which is which ends about here. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work at all. Uh, let's see. Just gonna wrap around the front and back of this, um, and because wire is very stubborn as a material, I don't know if this is legit. So what this means is, once we fold this in half like this, um, we will have to hold it in place right here before we can fold the winglet and curve it down nicely All right so that's gonna be interesting uh, this isn't great but this is my first time testing this idea out so give me some slack this is a prototype anyway and do the same kind of idea here but we do have to straighten out this back trailing edge filament a little bit to be able to match the uh, spar really nice. Uh, so what we're gonna do is apply a piece of tape here. Oh, you guys can't really see that. Hold on, let me move this up a little bit. All right, so tape on the spar. So, and then wrap around the sides of the filament and we should be all set and look how asymmetric that is right shouldn't matter too much this is about one and a half centimeters off this side is about two but since this is a rapid prototype and I don't want to spend too much time on this uh, we'll just leave it as is and so at this point, I feel like I need one more tab of tape here just to secure this down. And this time we're gonna go like this instead of like this because we're running out of space uh, the other way. Just gonna wrap that around. This isn't gonna be perfect, but for the most part, I think it should be good. I'm actually surprised it turned out pretty well. Look at that. It wrapped around the metal wire really nicely, actually. So that's a plus. Um, I'm going to do the same to the other side. I'm just kind of put down some tape on this edge and really just mold it to the shape of the uh, thing and you know just kind of wrap it down flat and it should be okay for now um, so yeah now the wings are ready and before we do that uh, we would have to install the the twin booms and the tail I feel like so this has been going on for a little over an hour I feel like we might go to two hours today that'll be 120 minutes 
um, which is 25, 40, 45 minutes away. So we've got 45 minutes left, so let's see how far we can get. Um, so what we want to do for this, so this is the vertical stabilizer, which is going to go on the back of this thing. Uh, it's going to be like this kind of. Oh, you guys can't see. Well, that's my fault. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. All right, so we got, got the wings done, attached to the fuselage. We could finish this off right now, but I feel like I want to try building the twin boom section here and try mounting it um, before we close it off. So, like, we put the boom in here and then close it off. Um, or do something like that. I don't know if that'll work, but we will experiment a little bit. Um, so to do that, we need to start building the twin boom assembly. So once we build this, and then we either mount it like this and then fold the wings down, or we fold the wings down and then mount it. But I feel like doing the twin boom first would uh, be a nice way to go. So we're gonna put this sub-assembly to the side. Um, really just take out all our materials that we have here. Uh, we want to use something slim like this black straw right here. Um, and I had some doubts about using this at first, but I feel like it might be the only option since I want to effectively use the material, right? Um, it doesn't make sense to cut out a long paper structure to mimic this when you can just use a pre-made straw, right? So anyways, we're going to try and figure this out. Um, so before we build the boom... Uh, I feel like we should model the, uh, whatchamacallit, the thing, um, the leading edge, right? So these flaps here are for the uh, leading edge of, you know, this design, right? So it's a lip structure. So let's actually fold that. Uh, actually use this roller. This ruler is nice because it's kind of square. There's a square edge to it. Just makes it more, I don't know, it feels more like a tool to me. So I can fold this up a little bit and line it up with the tip here. And then use a ruler to really fold that edge. Right, get a really precise fold. So it's nice. Um, do the same for the other side. So here we're gonna line it up with. Okay, so first we're gonna have to lift it up, get our ruler underneath, and kind of line it along the line here. Just kind of eyeballing this. All right. And then you just fold up like that, have a precise fold. And so now I feel like these should be on the inside. So the A tail will be like this, and this double layered leading edge will be on the inside. Um, don't, because you know that keeps the outside uniform looking, right? Which I feel like is a nice thing. Um, so let's see, uh, do we want to wrap a straw inside and give it some extra thickness? I don't know. I feel like that might be overkill. So we're going to keep this design simple and just use paper. Um, I'm going to fold this down, but not like completely killing the crease here. So this is a different type of fold. Um, normally. I would 
you know, like to make some other parts. I don't know any example off the top of my head right now, but you would have to, you know, kind of make this crease really hard, right? But since this is like a lip structure, you might actually not want to do that. Um, what you can do is take advantage of the paper's mechanical properties and kind of just bend it. So you, once you have this crease, don't like completely kill it, but bend the aft edge here and close it off. So what that does is it has a tendency to bow out a little bit. So you have this nice kind of shape, right? It's kind of like a lip. And so take advantage of that, right? Um, but yeah, to tape it down, you do need to kind of kind of force it, pin it down. Um, and what you can do is do kind of a pre-fold. I am really sorry about that. My phone overheated again. I had to put it in the fridge, which isn't a great idea. Um, but it got it cooled down enough. So hopefully, hopefully we have enough uh, time left before, uh, before it overheats again. But uh, sorry about that. Yeah, it was a really hot day today. So let me just close the door real quick. back I am so sorry about that um, so yeah where was I I you know wanted to pre-fold this you know the trailing edge down right so you want to like do it but not like do it too much want to have it have that little lip thickness in the front um, Right, so that's great. Um, now what we can do is kind of just eyeball the length of tape that we need here and kind of, uh, I'm just reading the comments, I'm sorry. Uh, hello. Anyway, um, yeah, so just take this length, eyeball it. Take this amount of tape, just align it with this edge right here. Right. See that? I want to make sure that this is really secure. And then just kind of like fold it over. I like to use my hands for this instead of a ruler, just to get a better feel. It's that human element of uh, making. So you fold this down, then the tape will secure itself onto this back uh, trailing edge portion here. And then the excess we can just either fold over onto itself or trim off, which I'm going to do in this case. So I want to keep it a clean look. All right, let's take that piece somewhere. So now we have this nice structure. If you notice, it's like a lip, right? Um, and then yeah, so just taped that side trailing edge should be okay because most of the time it's not going to experience any major lows but for aerodynamic purposes we want the leading edge to be a little bit thicker a little blunt that way the air flows over nicely um, and doesn't separate and cause issues so we're going to do the same for the other side this is like 
my favorite part about this whole process is just when things coming when things come together you know it's like that meme where the guy's like oh yeah it's all coming together <laughs> anyway just want to do the same thing here right um and then just you know just slightly lightly tap it push it down flap just kind of fold this or not fold really just secure this and then trim off the excess so I'm gonna trim from the top now because I think in the template making stage there's a little gap Right, so there's a little extra material here. I'm just gonna trim that off with the tape. So now it's all flush and nice. Sorry about that. All right, so we have our two leading edge lips here. Now I just kind of want to fold this top bit. All right, fold it over. This isn't great. Let me just fix the shape a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. It's a little better. Um, if you want, you can double side this um, by creating like a like a different separate piece of paper that wraps around. Right, I'm just showing for example. Right that wraps around um, all of this. But for sake of simplicity, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, this looks pretty neat as it is. So um, what I'm gonna do is hold this together and then lightly bend that. Um, and so it's, it's kind of uh, parallel to this, right? And that's kind of it for the A-tail. I've never actually made an A-tail this nice. This is my first time doing this. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Hopefully the phone doesn't overheat. God damn it. Let's see, it's 76 degrees outside right now. So hopefully it doesn't fail on me. Anyway. Um, you want to start creating the booms. I think for the booms, I might want to cut like a slot on on the straw, and it's not gonna be like a complete cut through the circle. It's gonna be like a half cut, so just one side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow this to slip in, right? And then we can crush it because once this is cut, um, we can fold it down flat and kind of meld it with this shape right here. Um, I don't know how long the booms are going to be yet, but based on initial estimates, I'd say maybe about this long. <laughs> initial estimates, I just literally eyeballed it. So um, let's see, that's about eight or so centimeters from the trailing edge to the trailing edge. Uh, we're gonna have to make it a little longer than that because it's you know, part of the boom is gonna be embedded inside the uh, inside the, the wing or on the wing, depending on what configuration I go with. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know. This is a good question. This is where experimentation comes into play. So I still have 25 minutes for the two hour mark, which I think I'm gonna try and aim for that this week. Might do a stream tomorrow, depending on motivation levels. Anyway, 
Um, okay, so if it's about 8, we need at least 10, maybe 12. So let's simply see, like, how long is this thing in centimeters? This thing is about 20. It's 19 and a half. Oh, God, those numbers are terrible. Uh, I don't want to do this. I could just attach it, straight up attach it first, and then measure and then cut away as we go. I feel like that would make sense. That That's a good way to go. I was trying to conserve material, but then I realized I have like 500 of these. So it should be interesting. Um, not sure that sentence made any sense, but whatever. So, how much do we want to cut? Oh, we want to end this where it starts to curve. Alright, so that's about... How much is it? That's about two centimeters. All right, two centimeters cut, one side. Now we can fit this in. That's actually really nice. There's nobody watching the stream right now, but if you are watching this in the future, this is so nice. I mean, look at that. The plastic just molds itself. Oh, God, this is great. All right, let's see if that crack stretched a little bit. No, it's still two centimeters. That's good. So, made the two centimeter cut. And we're just placing this in. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Phone put itself to sleep but I think we have it the way we want it. So now we're just gonna tape this down. Look at that. What do you know? We integrated a boom with a flat surface very nicely. Right. I like this. This is actually really nice. Um, yeah, I think I might actually use this technique. I just invented a new technique. Um, I might use this on the Astra. This is really neat. I like it. <laughs> so, I'm just taping up this bit right here just to reinforce it a little more. So we integrated the boom 
and the A tail on one side on the on the starboard side. This is the right side. So, so now we just have to do it for the other side. So make a two centimeter cut. I right, just gotta make sure this this straw is legit. So make a two centimeter cut right here. Slip this right into that straw. Just gonna take this down. Just a little bit more. Anyway, I think that's really nice. Anyway. Now look at this. This is a terribly, terribly long boom. So we're gonna have to trim that down. Um, how much to keep? How much to keep? That is the question. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about that. That is the highway right outside my window. My apartment is right next to a highway, so. Apologies, but uh, this is this is about right. Let's see. From the drawing, it's about a seven inch. Uh, not an inch, centimeters. Let's see, this cord, one, two, about, so two times this cord, this cord is, let's see how long is this, this is about four and a half, so about nine, need about nine, uh, we'll round up to ten now, and cut it at ten centimeters. Oh, it's nice to have a little extra. Actually, let's go to 12. How about that?
I'll just uh, make sure this is the same length. All right, so you just trim those two down and we have the twin boom structure assembly done. And let's see how it looks. So if we do that, it's gonna be a little far behind. So I think we should mount it a little closer like that. I'm trying to decide whether or not to integrate it inside the wing or keep it outside. Uh, I feel like making it go inside the wing will warp the wing a little bit. So what I'm gonna try and do is All right, I feel like I'm gonna have to close the wing and then mount it on the bottom or something. Or actually, you know what? This this actually makes a lot of sense, right? So the way we uh, kind of mounted it here was we cut it halfway and then wrapped the straw around and then kind of taped it in place. Um, what I'm thinking about for mounting it is actually I don't know if that's structurally sound, but let's see if we, if we just straight up cut it down the middle like this and then put half of it inside, half of it outside. I feel like that's going to bend. I feel like that might not be structurally sound. Um, yep. So I think I'm going to actually mount it, uh, after the wing and fuselage are completed. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah, so, so we're, gonna, we're gonna close the wings off and then build the fuselage and kind of go from there um yeah this is gonna be interesting Yeah, this is a very interesting design. I don't know how much to... cut. So we mount it like that. Might be a little too close coupled. Then again, it's forward swept, so it's not gonna lift, it's gonna be a little forward. Let's actually see how long this is, right? From here to here, that's about nine. Wow, that is right on the dot, nine. Okay. Will a simple tape connection do it? That's a good question.
feel like it could. Sorry, I'm just going off on a tangent right now. Um, I'm just kind of thinking through this process. Plus there's zero of you on the stream, so I can just take all the time I need to think. That's probably too close. I think we're gonna go with a nominal of nine centimeters. We're gonna have to close this off, close the main wing assembly off, because I think it should be doable to mount this under the wing um, and make it a very secure structure that way. Um, the reason why we're not going with in the wing is that it might warp the wing structure, which I don't want to deal with that. Um, Alternatively, if we go on top of the wing, well, that's basically the same as going on the bottom, but you're now ruining flow, airflow over the top of the wing. So, oh yeah, it's kind of a trade-off. So I think we're gonna go with the bottom mounted design. Sorry about that. This, I'm just thinking through this um, right now. So I think we're just gonna close the wing off at this point. So take a good look at the wing. All right, this is kind of the structure. We took the templates, taped them together, taped the assembly together assembly to the fuselage to just kind of tack it in place. We mounted the spars in three locations each. And then we mounted these paper clips to the winglets so that they can be shaped into that nice uh, bend later. Um, and we built the tail assembly today, which is really nice. It actually turned out a lot better than I expected, um, considering this is a new method here of integrating the spar with a flat piece control surface. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting to see where this build goes. Um, I think, yeah, what I'm going to do from here on is close this, um, by the end of the stream, I will have this closed and then this closed and then probably the winglets. We're gonna bend the winglets and shape that into place. So here we go. We are, we are going to mount, or we're going to close this off. Uh, putting a long piece of tape along this side and we're gonna flip it over and make sure that get 
it's received on the opposite side nicely. Now we're just gonna seal off this wing tip here. the first time I'm seeing this actually this is a very nice wing it's incredibly stiff and it has a nice thickness to it um, we're not going to seal the other side which is probably this much Fold this down gently and try and get a nice edge match. Sorry about that. My phone fell asleep on me again. Don't know how much you missed, but essentially we sealed off the starboard and port side wings. Uh, I'm just going to fold this down a little bit and just crease it down um, and now we're gonna seal off the wing tip here all right so this this is actually a little overlapped I'm gonna have to trim this yeah I don't want to modify that too much should be good it's mostly all set um, Just securing the bottom side. See this much better. This is the entire span, and then this is going to be mounted to the back here, and it's going to be great. Still need to determine the proper length of this section here for the boom and twin boom and a tail. Before we do that, that's probably going to be one of the final steps. Um, so we'll do that ne next stream. We will integrate the A tail with the completed fuselage. Um, so we'll build the fuselage in the next stream. Um, we will make sure it's all solid and everything. And then we will mount the A tail and hopefully be done with this project. So. It only took a couple streams, you know, four streams or so. So in the remaining five minutes, I think I will try and create a secure, uh, 
of a wind. It's a fuselage connection here. So, the nice thing about taping it on the underside here is that it, when you load it up, it's going to be in tension. So this is actually going to be really strong. Um, so that's nice. Uh, looking into mounting something like this. So this cross section is not even. I am questioning the accuracy to which I built this. It seems like the fuselage might be slightly off. to look at it from afar to determine if it's symmetric. This is an adventure for the next stream, building the fuselage. I am trying to verify whether or not it is symmetric. So it does not seem symmetric to me. So it's a couple degrees off. That's a shame. Yeah, this center line is misleading. I think I drew it wrong. I think this is a much better alignment. About five inches. Trying to verify that it is symmetric.
Sorry about that. Wasn't exactly on the stream. Um, but yeah, I think I centered it now. There's that. Um, and yeah, we will, in the next stream, build the fuselage up um, and then mount the A tail assembly. All right, that's pretty much it for this stream. Um, stay tuned. I guess I might or might not do another stream this weekend, but I will definitely be back next Friday. So whenever I come back next, well, we'll just continue with this project, build the fuselage, and then mount the A-tail. All right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.